Thank you, Edne. Thank you, thank you very much, Edne, for you have been a great, a great MC, really. We really enjoyed listening to you. You brought so much energy. I am here now with Jean-Jacques Barberis. Jean-Jacques is the head of institutional and corporate client coverage and an executive and general management board member at Amundi. So thank you, Jean-Jacques Ving, and bonsoir. I think you are in Paris currently. Bonsoir, absolutely, Richard. Jean-Jacques, we have a special announcement to make that I'm personally very excited about. But before we reveal the announcement, I would love to ask you a few questions. Uh, first of all, Jean-Jacques, we have heard a lot about the importance of ESG frameworks being exclusive of emerging markets. So how uh, is a European stakeholder like Amundi supporting in this? Yeah, thank you very much, Risha. It's a pleasure being with you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, and I would like to uh, congratulate you uh, also for the title of the event, the content for sure, but the title. I think your Neo Renaissance uh, is perfectly well chosen, uh, particularly in the context where we are. Where we are. Uh, Renaissance was after the Great Plague, and it uh, led to a new conception of the world which was humanism. So I don't, I'm not sure if ESG is the new humanism of the post-COVID-19 world, but I'm pretty sure that ESG is completely going to change the financial in industry. It has started to change it. And to answer directly to your question, I think what we try to do at MND since a decade, and because it's been a decade uh, that we are working on ESG and that uh, ESG is one of our founding pillars, is really to engage into an ESG approach which is inclusive, basically which is trying to incentivize all the stakeholders to do better and at the moment to engage in the transition, notably in the context of our road to Glasgow. So this is what is at the heart of the philosophy of uh, ESG at Amundi. Uh, and in emerging countries in particular, we consider indeed that we need to have, I would say, uh, special developments or attention uh, to the specific situations. This is something that we've tried to work by being innovative in the various number of partnerships, notably uh, with the IFC, the World Bank, uh, for the development, for instance, of green bond markets in emerging countries, but other, uh, I would say, initiatives that we took. But generally speaking, our ambition is to be 100% ESG. That's already what we are, but with an inclusive approach that encapsulates the differences between the different geographies. And so that's why we're very happy to be associated to this event today. Jean-Jacques, since you are in Paris, uh, and of course in France, I would like to ask you a question about uh, the new CAC, the CAC40 ESG index, which was announced a few weeks ago, and it was, I think, launched last month, in fact. So in the context of our conversation here today, do you think the that the inclusions and exclusions make sense. Uh, in other words, I would say, uh, will such an index uh, help further the transition to a green economy? What is your reaction about this CAC 40 uh, uh, ESG? Uh, first, we were extremely, and we are extremely supportive of the initiative huh, that was led by uh, Stéphane Boujna, the CEO of uh, Euronext. Uh, who decided to launch a uh, CAC 40 uh, ESG. Uh, there are some other examples at European level or even uh, at, uh, we'd say, uh, other levels of other indexes that are built now on ESG. But I think the CAC 40 one is, the, is a very symbolic one. Uh, I think, will, will it solve the question of the transition by itself? Probably not. Uh, can it be a milestone uh, in the overall journey for sure? So we think it's quite positive. Coming back to your question on exclusion inclusion, Basically, we consider that uh, the ESG approach uh, shall be inclusive the maximum possible. Again, the idea uh, is uh, to encourage all the companies to engage into the transition and to do better. And I think the CAC 40 ESG is in a way signaling and is a signal vis-à-vis -vis the companies that they need to engage. Uh, the methodology will evolve. There will be companies that will be in, will be out. So I think it's another tool, another interesting tool to ensure that there is sufficient pressure for all, from all the stakeholders for the companies to engage concretely in the transition. So in a nutshell, uh, we are very supportive of the initiative and we hope there will be more initiatives of that kind uh, in uh, the different stock exchanges in the world uh, following up uh, the leadership of your next. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Jacques. So it's now my pleasure to announce the memorandum of understanding, the MOU, between Amundi and the FIA Institute. So before signing it, Jean-Jacques, can you tell us more about the content of this uh, MOU, please? 
Well, first, Richard, uh, thank you very much. I think we're very excited as well uh, to be your partner uh, through this uh, MOU. I think we uh, share one ambition, uh, which is uh, to uh, create, I would say, research, knowledge, uh, and on ESG in emerging markets, because as we discussed together, uh, we believe indeed that we need some approaches that are uh, diversified and different from the geographies. And so if there is one ambition uh, out of this memo, uh, out of this uh, MOU, uh, it's uh, to uh, contribute to uh, what I would call the intellectual equipment on ESG in emerging countries. So I think we have a lot of work on our plate uh, to make sure that this uh, intellectual equipment uh, is uh, full, uh, but uh, I think this is uh, a great milestone. We're very excited about it, and you can count uh, on all the uh, ESG researchers, uh, resources of MND to engage uh, with you uh, for that purpose. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Jacques. So let's sign it now. <laughs>